welcome to my channel Thread the Needle. My name is Vani and I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. Um, I'm here for my floss tube number 22 and I am going to share all my progress on my works and progresses and some upcoming plans that I have for my stitching. Those of you who is uh, who have not been here before and this is your first time or you're just starting to watch my channel, welcome. Thank you for joining me. This is where I talk about all things cross stitch and my love for cross stitching, full coverage cross stitching. And for those of you who are returning, thank you for coming back and I hope you enjoy. So let's jump right in. I have three projects that I call my focus pieces for the year. And um, these were three projects that I really wanted to um, give a little bit of extra attention because because of the amount of works and progresses that I have, um, I have so many on the go all the time, I wanted to make sure, and I work on them in a rotation, I wanted to make sure that these three pieces would get a little bit of extra attention. So every week I make sure one day is dedicated to them. So let's start. We have, in the beginning, we have Ganesha. Now, Ganesha is a Heaven and Earth Designs project and it's being done on 22 count, two over one full cross. It is one of my favorite pieces and I have to say I'm really enjoying it and I've gotten a lot more done on it this year than I have in the last few years. Yes, few years. These are labors of love. They take a long time but uh, the end result is always, always worth it. Now, this is also the project that I've chosen for my June Daily 100. So Daily 100 is something that Leanne and I do. I think we started it calling it Daily 100 just recently, but it is a concept that started by, I think, Stitch and Mommy. And basically, it means that you pick a project and you do 100 stitches on it every day. I decided to do a different project every month. I think Leanne, who is Small Town Stitches, she is doing the same project uh, until she finishes it. Um, hers is also really lovely. But I decided for the month of June that I wanted Ganesha to have a little extra love. So here's where, she, where it is. Now, I... Um, I've been doing good with the daily 100. I am just a few hundred, maybe a couple hundred stitches behind my quota, only because I'm finding the weekend weather is good and, and we have some time, so we'll probably do something outside. I'm finding it a little harder, and plus we had all our graduation celebrations for my son, so there was always something going on. So the weekends are a little bit harder to get in my daily 100, but I try and catch up on the, on the other days, and this is how much I've gotten done. So. I'm finally getting into more of the uh, colorful part, but I've gotten a lot of the background stitching done and I'm still enjoying it very, very much. So this is Ganesha and uh, I can't wait to get back to it. So that is project number one, uh, project number one in my focus pieces. The next one is, um, should I do, yeah, the next one is called it's a mystery cell by the Cross Stitch Studio. But I guess it's not a mystery anymore because we kind of know what it's gonna be, but we don't, it's still a mystery because we don't know what the full picture is gonna be. But here's how much I've gotten done. And now it's even easier to tell where the features are coming. So this is the eyelid or the eyelash area of the owl and it's getting to the good stuff. This page I decided to stitch in cross-country stitching because I'm a little bit faster on that and that way I think I can get through it a little quicker because I'm already behind on this. I was trying really hard and I was doing good for the first few months. I think up until month five I was keeping in time with it and then month of June came and I just lost it all together. I'm already a month behind and before you know it the July months page is going to come out so I'm trying not to stress about it. I'll eventually catch up. I might be a month or two behind, but I'll eventually get it done. I'm still really enjoying this one. I'm really enjoying the 
Um, not knowing what you're stitching on. I know a lot of people that might scare you, but I find it exciting and fun. I know the end result is going to be good. So um, just because I know the quality of the patterns that this company has put out before, so I have no issues with that. Um, it's being stitched on 22 count, two over one full cross. Okay, then we're gonna go to my next focus piece. This is um, Siamese Fighting Fish by Anita from One Stipple Two Stitch. And here is her lovely piece. I love, love, love the colors that are coming out now. Here it was a little bit more darker teals, but there's some blues and, and greens coming out here that I'm very much enjoying. So I'm getting through this diagonal right here. And as you can see, when I get to the bottom of my diagonals, I'm finishing them off in this type of uh, point so that I don't have a straight line of stitches going across the bottom of my pages. I'm really enjoying doing the cross country diagonal method on this because it allows me to do a little bit of color and a little bit of black and I get a little bit of everything in one diagonal. So I'm gonna continue that with this, but I'm very, very much enjoying this and it's getting to the good stuff and I cannot wait. So this is by One Stable Two Stitch. Um, the designer of the piece is actually her son, Chris, and um, he designed this project. It's a, um, a fish, you know, let's see. I had to pause the video because as per normal, I am not organized and I forgot to bring my tablet so I can show you what the finished pieces are gonna look like. So let's just quickly dart back to Ganesha. This is what Ganesha is going to be like when it's complete and isn't that just darling? Love it. But let's go back to the piece that I was just now talking about. Siamese fighting fish. So this is what the lovely artwork is going to look like when complete. I'm trying not to get the glare on it, but isn't it so colorful? I'm up in this corner right here. So I've still got a long ways to go, but I think it is coming along gloriously and I'm very much enjoying it. So moving on, let's see what's next on the list. I have to work from my notes because I'm, I'm, I can't remember what I did last week. Um, all right, so next, um, my rotation wheel actually pulled up a long lost UFO. So it is a unfinished object that ended up in my UFO pile. It is called Golden Promises. And let me tell you, I forgot how much I loved this piece. I don't know why it became a UFO. I have absolutely no explanation for it. I, I must have just been in a different kind of stitching mood because I'll get like that. I'll have a certain mood when I wanna work on certain types of projects, certain themes, um, but clearly I, I wanna get back to this one because it's gorgeous. So let me show you what it's going to look like first. It's actually quite a lovely piece. It is a Heaven and Earth Designs project and it is by CCK Ching Chow Quick. I think that's how you pronounce it. But this is, I mean, it's just so beautiful. And of course it has a peacock in the bottom, so like it can't get any better than that. So here is how much I'll show you how much I had done before it became a UFO. So here, that's basically how much I had done. <clears throat> and then I was, I'm working on this page here. So um, a lot of this was already put in. So as you can see, I'm converting it into diagonal lines here, but uh, such a wonderful piece. Like, Look at that, that's being stitched on uh, two over one 18 count full crosses and it is such a joy to stitch. I love it, absolutely love it. It is such, it's so much fun. That, and I don't know what it is about the 18 count and when projects like this where the details still appear, you wouldn't think so, but they still come out very, very nicely and I cannot be happier. And then the next one is Autumn Owl Trio. This is the project where I cut off uh, part of the top of the project because all it was was 
orange, orange, orange. This is artwork by Anya Kai. It's such an adorable little thing. So I cut it off here and I'm not doing any of that orange. So I finally got to stitch a little bit of the purple, one of my favorite colors. It's actually the same color as my sweater. Um, I got some more done in there, so that's super exciting. I think I ran out of that orange, so I need to check my master stock and make sure I have some more of that orange. Um, and it's, it's coming along nicely. So that's that one. And next I have, so this next project, I have been using it uh, to demonstrate my um, diagonal cross-country stitching method. So for those of you who don't know, I put out a couple of videos to demonstrate how I do my diagonal cross-country stitching method. And I used this chart uh, as my stitching sample. The chart is by Donna Gelsinger and it is um, mini moose crossing. Here's what it's going to look like when it's complete. And I think it's coming along fabulously. The detail in it is amazing. I'm really enjoying this a lot. And so I used this in my demo video. The first video um, basically just explained how I do my diagonal stitching, cross country stitching method. And then in the second video, I called it a follow up video. I answered all the questions that came out from doing that first video. So I hope I was able to answer all the questions in a clear way, clear and concise way. Um, you can always leave another question. I'll be happy to answer if I can. But here is Mini Moose Crossing and I think it's coming along great. I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, I think I'll maybe continue using this one for one of, for my Stitch With Me videos, but I think it's a good one to use. There's a lot of confetti stitching um, and I think it's, it'll work out nice. So there she is. And this one is on 18 count, two over one full cross. Okay, now since we finished all that May stitching, the Mayfly May stitching, and I had a new start every week, um, but I still wanted to get in my next birthstone because I had just finished one and it's time to pick up another one. And so I did, and I'm happy to say that I picked a beautiful one because but honestly speaking, they're all kind of beautiful. So the one I picked was QS Sapphire. And I just love all these blue colors. They are so much fun to stitch. And yeah, I'm only doing the sky just now because I started in the upper corner, but it is still very much a joy to stitch. And here's how much I've got done so far. Um, I am stitching this on to match the other ones. I'm stitching this on, let's see, uh, two over one on 22 count. And here's how much I have. So I've got my grid going and I'm doing my diagonals. Um, and I have to continue on with that, but yeah, so it's, not very much to show, but it's a start. And I decided that um, all of the birthstones are fairly similar in size. Um, one of them was very, very small, I think just under 150 by 150. So I wanted them all to kind of match. So I actually had to adjust this one a little bit so that it wouldn't be too much different in size. So I think I cut a little bit here, some of the background there. I cut a tiny bit on the top because there's not a lot to cut off there. I cut off as close to the wing as I could get and I actually had to cut off on the bottom a little so that, because I want to get them all framed very similarly. So I didn't want it to look very, very odd if this one was so much bigger than the other ones. Um, Cause this one is my fourth one that I'm stitching, I believe. So I think it'll be really fun. The colors are just my kind of colors and I'm uh, really enjoying that one a lot. So I did have to adjust the size, but I think I'm okay with that. Now, uh, let's see. 
Another thing that Leanne and I are going to do together, because um, I think we both like Christmas, and I just finished the QS Christmas presents a few months ago, a couple months ago, and I didn't have another Christmas stitch in my stash or in my work in progress pile. So I wanted to find another one. And I think a common thing um, that a lot of people talk about is Christmas in July. I know sometimes here people will decorate their house all up in July and, and celebrate Christmas in July. So I thought, why not stitch a Christmas in July piece? So I picked another Christmas piece that I can have for me. I have no plans to finish it in time for this year's Christmas. This is just another one to um, stitch on whenever I'm in the mood, in the holiday mood. And I've decided that I'll start it in July. Um, July 1st is Canada Day, so we all have a holiday. So I might just use that to start the stitch. But my plan is for my Christmas in July stitch, I will stitch it on every 24th and 25th of the month um, for the holiday season and we'll see where we get with that. Um, here is the one that I finally selected. There were a lot, let me tell you. There was a lot to choose from. I didn't want anything too big. I do have, a, yeah, I didn't want a big chart because then I already have a few big charts in my uh, rotation wheel and my work works and progresses. So I wanted something manageable that would only take me not as long and so I finally found this one um, I think it pretty much I, I just looked so here here it is it's called I think mini it's by Ruth Sanderson and it's mini Christmas mailbox it's lovely there you go that's the true colors it is just so lovely and Weirdly enough, there actually is not very much white in it. There's some Krynik, which is that sparkly thread, um, but there actually is no white. There's every other color but white. So I'm very curious as to how this is going to stitch up. And the other thing that I wanted to try, and I think I might try it with this project, so I've done every kind of stitching method out there. I've tried stitching block by block. I've tried stitching using parking method. I've done cross country stitching. I've done the diagonal cross country stitching, which is my preferred method at the moment. But what I have not tried is ECC, the extreme cross country. So that means that you start with the first color and finish it throughout the entire project and then go on to the next color. So let's say I start with 310, then I have to stitch all of 310 across the whole project and then I'm done with 310, no more 310, and I move on to the next color. I've never done that. I've only ever did cross country stitching within a restricted area, like a page, and now, of course, I restrict myself to the diagonal, but I still stop at the bottom of the page line, but I feather my stitches or I'll do like I, I'm doing on the Siamese project. I will bring it to a point so that there's no page line, but I've never tried extreme cross country. I'm gonna play around with it, see if I'm in the mood to do it. I think it would work better if um, the whole project fits within a frame. I think I have a large frame if that works that way, because I don't, I don't, I think I'd get annoyed if I have to keep changing my frame out and moving it along the project. I think it would work much better if the frame stays in one place. And it's a small enough project. I haven't decided if I'm doing it on 22 count or 18 count. So many decisions, but fun decisions. So a lot of things to think about while um, I move on, but lots of, Summer is here, you guys, so lots of things happening, but I still wanna get lots of stitching done because that's what I love. That is my me time, that is my favorite time, is when I get to stitch. So I would like to end it there by saying thank you for joining me today um, to come see my update on all my works and progresses. 
I'm having so much fun stitching them all, every single one, and each one is so different. I mean, you've got a birthstone, you've got a wildlife piece, so out of place for me, you've got owls holding a Starbucks cup. I mean, come on, you can't tell me that's not a Starbucks cup. All right, it even has the winter, winter design that Starbucks has on it. So then we have that. Then we have this lovely piece. This is so me. And then we have this colorful piece, the Siamese fish one. Then we have a darn mystery cell. We don't even know what that's gonna be like. And then we have Ganesha, which is also very me. So I love variety. If you didn't already know that, you know it now. So thanks for coming and watching me today. It's been a blast. Until next time, bye now.